These are 20 of the most ridiculous moments in motorcycle racing history. It all starts at the 2019 Argentine Grand Prix when something hilarious and unexpected happened. Italian rider Valentino Rossi was delivering a show on the track, battling it out with fellow countryman Andrea Dovizioso. The crowd was buzzing, everyone on the edge of their seats as Rossi and Dovizioso competed for second place. Rossi, with his signature flair, finally zoomed past Dovizioso, securing that sweet second spot. The crowd was going wild. Rossi's fans are in a frenzy. They love this guy. And right there, in the midst of all the celebration, one marshal sees a golden opportunity. Rossi's Yamaha M1 just sitting there, and what does this marshal do? Snaps a quick selfie, of course. Talk about seizing the moment. That marshal's got a story for the grandkids, right? That one time, I took a selfie with Rossi's bike right after he pulled a classic Rossi move. A happy Rossi, that is, because number 19 was quite the opposite. You see, at the 2016 San Marino, this itty-bitty country right here, Grand Prix, Valentino Rossi found himself in some drama on the track with his name all over it. Spanish rider Alix Espargaro, another ace on the circuit, is taking it slow on the racing line. Rossi, zipping around the track, finds Espargaro in his way. Rossi tries to get past, but Espargaro, much like that one slow driver on the fast lane in the highway, isn't doing any favors. Frustrated, Rossi decides to communicate in the universal language of racing. After the incident, race director Mike Webb steps in and gives the Spaniard a lesson on track awareness. Espargaro's take? What's the big deal? I didn't even disturb him. He's got a point, but hey, it's Rossi we're talking about. This whole thing turns into the classic ordinary quarrel. Rossi, being Rossi, shrugs it off and gets back to racing. Espargaro, probably still wondering what all the fuss was about. But for once, number 18 isn't about a human-to-human -human issue but rather the machine itself jumps onto the second bike straight back out on track two and a half minutes remaining because at a 2015 motorcycle race in Austin, Texas Spanish rider Marc Marquez was facing a challenging situation as the session progressed Marquez experienced issues with his primary bike leading to a tense and unexpected turn of events the problem became apparent during the pit lane run-up when Marcus's bike refused to start. Come on, Marquez. Well, we saw, didn't we, that they had real issues getting that bike started. This is on the pit lane. A situation that would fluster many, but only seemed to fuel his resolve. In a moment that would become iconic, he quickly leapfrogged over the pit wall, sprinting back to his team to switch to his secondary bike. Despite the setback and the pressure of the ticking clock. Here is Mark Marquez, seventh place for the reigning world champion. But this is, is, after his sighting lap, after the problems, this is the lap. If anybody can do it, he can. Marquez showcased his exceptional skills on the track. He delivered a phenomenal performance, navigating the circuit with precision and speed. In a stunning turn of events, he managed to secure pole position. I guess his bike wasn't the only one getting some cardio in, but if you thought that was weird, Number 17 is on another level. Because during a 2021 Grand Prix in Austria, there was a moment that left everyone scratching their heads, especially Italian rider Enea Bastianini. Bastianini, as per usual, gears up for a great race and gets off to a solid start. He's slicing through the pack, eyeing the top 10, and then, bam. His Ducati bike decides it's time to show some skin, or in this case, engine components. 
In a twist right out of a blooper reel, the left part of Bastianini's fairing just decides to part ways with the bike. Bastianini finds himself understandably gutted. He's there thinking, I was here to put on a show for you all, and instead, his bike turns into a striptease act. You can just feel the frustration of this man. It's a mix of disbelief and disappointment for Bastianini. He leaves the Austrian track with a cocktail of good vibes from his performance, but a bitter aftertaste from the abrupt end. However, not such an abrupt end compared to what happened in number 16 to British rider Mason Law. During a 2017 championship race in the United Kingdom, Law had a day he won't forget anytime soon. Imagine racing at a blistering 140 miles per hour, and then suddenly it slip slide and a high-speed ballet of cartwheeling through gravel. Well, that's exactly what happened to Mason Law. Mason's bike, maybe thinking it's Tarzan, decides to go airborne and lands itself in a tree. Yes, a literal tree. One minute Mason's gunning for third place. The next, he's playing a game of, where's my bike, in the bushes. Mason, fortunately unscathed, along with his crew, went on a 10-minute mission, bushwhacking their way to find his rebellious Kawasaki. It's not every day you see a superbike playing hide-and-seek up a tree, and when they finally spot it, it's hanging there. Like it's decided tree climbing is its new sport, getting it down? Well, that's another story. It took a team of 10, a couple of saws, and a hydraulic forklift. Mason, unscathed and probably still shaking his head in disbelief, credits his quick reflexes and top-notch protective gear for walking away miraculously without a scratch. But if you think that was shocking to see, then oh boy wait until you hear about number 15. At a 2022 racing session in Spain, things started to get a bit too heated in the pits when two mechanics of a rival team did something daring, and not in a good way. Their target, Spanish rider Adrian Fernandez, was all set to zoom out of the pits, when unexpectedly, two mechanics straight out of a slapstick comedy decided to physically obstruct Fernandez by literally holding the rider's brake. Their presumed goal, to keep Fernandez from tailing one of their riders. Thankfully though, they slapped these two with a $2,000 fine each, and as the cherry on top were each suspended from attending two future Grand Prix's. I mean, come on, it's one thing to cheat in a video game, but real life? Yikes. But switching gears to a more light-hearted event in the spotlight is none other than British old-school legend Barry Sheen. Barry Sheen had a rather unique approach to dealing with his nicotine cravings, especially right before a race. Picture this. Sheen, a man known for his charisma and fearlessness on the track, also had a 60-a-day smoking habit. So what does a chain smoker do when he's all suited up and about to race? Well, the norm would be just to wait after the race, but for Sheen, drill a hole in his helmet, of course. Sheen had a hole drilled in his helmet's chin bar, just so he could smoke his beloved Galway's cigarettes on the grid. This little modification was a clear sign of his smoking habit, which he picked up at the tender age of nine, despite battling chronic asthma. But it's not just the helmet mod that paints the full picture of Sheen's dedication to his bad habit. After surviving a horrific 175 mile per hour crash at Daytona, I remember exactly what happened. I just changed into six gear. It was just coming up to maximum RPM, which is sort of 8,500. Which left him with a broken leg, six ribs, back, wrist, and collarbone. The first thing Sheeny reportedly asked for when he regained consciousness in the hospital wasn't pain relief, to see his family. Hell, even water. No, it was of course, a fag, a common British slang term for a cigarette. I don't know about you, but Sheen might have some competition with my old man. But speaking of competition, number 13 was all about competition with rider and bike, when during the 1985 San Marino Grand Prix, one of the most ridiculous moments in motorcycle racing history. thanks to countryman Randy Mamola, was witnessed. This was an era when bikes were notorious for their unpredictability, often pushing riders to their limits. Mamola aboard his ferocious Honda. 
found himself in a situation that seemed straight out of a rodeo. For sheer spectacle and star quality, two wheel crash of the year award goes to Californian Randy Mamola at Misson. His bike threatened to send him flying off the track at any moment. The scene was intense as he was trying to hold on to the mechanical beast, hell-bent on tossing him into the air. But Momola, displaying an extraordinary blend of skill, reflexes, and perhaps a touch of luck, managed to pull off a save that has since become legendary. It was a moment that had everyone holding their breath. However, riders involved in number 12 weren't as lucky as Momola, because at the 2021 Italian Grand Prix, Italian rider Enea Bastianini, along with French rider Johan Zarco, brought a whole new meaning to pre-race jitters, with a bizarre and spectacular clash before the race even started. Picture this, it's the warm-up lap, riders are getting into the zone, and then, chaos. Zarco, on his Pramac Ducati, decides it's the perfect time for some hard braking, almost coming to a standstill. Bastianini, following closely on his Avintia Ducati, is caught off guard. He slams the brakes, but physics has other plans. His bike flips, sending him somersaulting into Zarco's bike in an unbelievable spectacle. Miraculously, both riders emerged without any serious injuries. Zarco, probably just as surprised as everyone else, keeps his bike upright and even managed to lead the race briefly later on, finishing an impressive fourth. Bastianini, on the other hand, dashes for his second bike, but unfortunately crashes out on lap four while trying to catch up. Bastianini didn't mince words about the incident, calling out Zarco for his abrupt braking. We have did a big error because uh, have break uh, uh, after the, the last corner, very, very hard, and uh, it's impossible to me to... I have some pain uh, in some part of my body. Zarco, however, seemed as baffled as everyone else, saying he was just warming up the tires. But shifting gears to number 11, we take it back to the Czech Republic in 1998. Italian rider Max Biaggi pulled off a stunt that's etched in motorcycle racing history. Fresh from his four straight titles, Biaggi was in his rookie season where Australian rider Mick Doohan was the man to beat. It was a thrilling season, and Biaggi needed a win to keep his championship dreams alive. Duhan, starting from pole position, crashed early, setting the stage for Biaggi to take the lead. And eventually the win. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Biaggi crosses the finish line and decides to celebrate with a wheelie. But not just any wheelie. A wheelie almost tipping him over as he landed. The act was so intense that it caused some damage to his bike, but that didn't dampen the moment. Why such a daring celebration, you ask? Well, Biaggi had a special guest that day, Finnish Italian model and film actress Anna Falci. His victory and that wheelie were, in a way, his impressive way of saying thanks for the luck she brought him, or just her presence overall. Biaggi later reflected on that iconic wheelie, admitting it wasn't exactly a calculated move. Caught by a gust of wind in fourth gear, he just managed to break in time. But number 10 brings a bit of a different story, quite literally. Can you imagine a book about wild tales being inspired by a motorcycle race? That's exactly what happened with a book titled Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It began as a straightforward assignment to cover the Mint 400 Desert Race for Sports Illustrated. But in the hands of journalist Hunter S. Thompson, it morphed into something else entirely. The Mint 400, a fierce battle through the Nevada desert, was just the backdrop. Thompson took this racing event and spun it into a narrative that went far beyond the track, weaving in his iconic elements of excess and surreal adventure. This unexpected twist turned a motorcycle race report into a legendary piece of literature, showcasing the unpredictability and creativity of Thompson's writing. But staying in the realm of unpredictable and creative, Number nine brings both of these things, when during a rally in 2013, there was a competitor who stood out. Not just for his racing skills, but also for his unique sponsorship. French writer Hugo Payen was turning heads, 
And it wasn't just because of his performance on his bike. But what really caught everyone's attention was his sponsor. Not your typical corporate brand, but a pornographer. Yes, you heard that right. Payne's rally efforts were sponsored by none other than Marc Dorcel, a French producer of adult films. This wasn't a one-off stunt either. Dorcel had been backing Payne for three years. Payne's motorcycle wasn't just a machine for racing, it was a rolling advertisement, featuring images of adult film stars, quite the unexpected sponsor at any motorsport event for that matter. But more unexpected than that? Well, that's where number eight comes in. During a 2017 qualifying in Spain, British rider Cal Crutchlow experienced something never really heard of before. While fiercely competing in the quarter two round, the Honda rider found himself under attack, not from a rival on the track, but from a wasp. The situation unfolded rather dramatically. After nailing a corner, Crutchlow began frantically beating his leathers, a clear sign that something was amiss. He was forced to pull over and empty out his racing suit to deal with the uninvited guest. Despite this unexpected and painful encounter, where he was stung multiple times, Crutchlow showed remarkable resilience. He managed not only to finish the second qualifying round, but also to secure a third place finish overall. A resilience that was also seen at number seven, despite an odd mishap. As we all know the world of motorcycle racing, crashes are a common occurrence but some stand out for their sheer peculiarity. One such incident involved German rider Sandro Cortesi, who very bizarrely managed to fall on his right-hand side while heading into a left-hand corner. This kind of crash was straight up weird, as riders typically lean into the direction of the corner they are taking. Usually, in left-hand corners, the expectation is that if a crash occurs, it would be due to the bike leaning too far to the left. However, for Cortesi, the opposite happened. But hey, at least he was able to participate in the race, because wait until you hear about Italian rider Andrea Lenone. Back in 2019, motorcycle racers were buzzing with a rather unusual story about Andrea Iannone. The Italian rider, known for his speed and style, apparently had a bit of a mishap with cosmetic surgery. The story goes like this. Iannone decided to get his jawline worked on, but things didn't quite go as planned. The surgery led to an infection, and poor Iannone couldn't even pull his helmet on. This meant he had to miss out on a crucial test day, taking a hit on his career. Turns out, he was put on antibiotics where he had no choice but to await recovery. However, speaking on recovery, number five highlights a crucial recovery from a potential collision when in a practice session in Spain, Spanish writer Alex Espargaro encountered an unexpected competitor on the track, a cat. It was a cat. Yes, during the third free practice before the Spanish Grand Prix, Espargaro narrowly avoided a collision with a feline intruder that had somehow found its way onto the circuit. Espargaro, who had been setting impressive times, including the best time in the second free practice, had his focus tested when this adventurous cat made its surprise appearance. Displaying quick reflexes, Espargaro managed an ingenious maneuver to dodge the cat, ensuring both his and the cat's safety. I guess you can say this incident wasn't very embarrassing for him, because on the other hand, number four brings in a classic case of counting your chickens before they hatch. Italian rider Riccardo Russo experienced a rather embarrassing moment during a championship race. Morantino also uh, just gapping Nacho for the time being. We're on the final lap. <laughs> as he's busy celebrating and I think well either we're miscalculated or he has Russo leading the race and probably feeling his adrenaline pumping mistook the end of the penultimate lap for the race finish in his excitement he began celebrating prematurely he was fist pumping and even stood up on his bike basking in what he thought was his sweet sweet victory however the race was far from over 
While Russo was caught up in his imaginary victory lap, other racers zoomed past him, continuing the actual race. Elementary error here. Morantino races on. Oh dear, I don't chuckle because it's a disaster for uh, Russo. Uh, but for Nacho here, is it all in his hands? That this mix-up caused Russo to drop from a leading position to 14th place. The race commentator, witnessing this, expressed disbelief at what was unfolding, calling it the most appalling error of judgment here. The most appalling uh, error of judgment here as we race on. Morantino miscounted across the line. Russo stood up on his pegs and was busy celebrating. But I don't know about the most, as a pretty massive error was committed when, during the 2023 Qatar Grand Prix, a practice session took an unexpected turn involving Italian writer Franco Morbidelli and Spanish writer Alex Espargaro. It was a typical high-adrenaline session until tensions flared dramatically. The incident unfolded when Espargaro, apparently frustrated during the session, took a surprising action. He slapped Morbidelli on the back of the head. A bit more tension out on circuit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's uh, hang on here, boys. Now, we saw yesterday. Uh this was not just any moment in practice. It was a breach of the unspoken code of conduct between racers. Morbidelli, usually calm and collected, was visibly shaken and angered by the incident. He publicly slammed Espargaro for this lack of respect, highlighting the seriousness of the altercation. His frustration was intensified by the steward's decision, which he felt was too lenient. Espargaro was penalized with a grid drop and a fine, but Morbidelli believed this punishment didn't match the gravity of the action. But one thing's for sure, at least this moment wasn't as ridiculous as number two, because oh boy, brace yourself. In a story that's not your usual headline, Portuguese motorcycle racer Miguel Oliveira took a path less traveled in life. At 26, he tied the knot with his stepsister, Andrea Pimenta, who is 25, and they announced they were expecting their first baby together. This love story began when they were teenagers, as Miguel's father married Andrea's mother. Their relationship, which started as a friendship, eventually blossomed into something more. The couple had been together secretly for 11 years before going public in 2019. Miguel shared their journey on Instagram, from their wedding celebration to the announcement of their pregnancy, receiving lots of love and support from their followers. Despite the unconventional nature of their relationship, the couple has been open about their strong bond that developed over the years. Miguel's career as a successful motorcycle racer is notable too. He's made history in his sport, becoming the first Portuguese rider to win a world championship after his victory at the 2015 Italian Motorcycle Grand Prix. Comes out here in Portugal, Miguel Oliveira wins at home for Tech 3! But what pretty much is never seen in motorcycle racing is the actions that Turkish rider Toprak Razgatloglu is known for. Recently, he added another quirky moment to his collection that left fans both amused and bewildered. During a moment tagged as Toprak being Toprak, Razgatloglu decided to add a bit of fun to the proceedings by riding his bike backwards. In an act that blends skill and a sense of humor, Toprak showed off his ability to handle a bike in a way most people would never dream of trying. From unusual moments to humorous incidents, it's no secret that motorcycle racing involves a lot of feelings and emotions. So if you want to hear from some of the most emotional motorcycle racing moments ever witnessed, then this video is for you.